We're good? We're good? Good morning from Warren Arms Saturdays in Arsenal, Alabama. We're here to just praise God today. We're going to please Joel with us wherever you're at. And uh, do just like you'd be here. Just stand up and get in God's presence, put an effort forward, and He's going to unite our praises. And we'll be singing to Him like one man before Him. And right. I, I feel like I got something. It was a revelation to me this week, so maybe it'll be that way for you. Let's pray again. Holy Spirit, we know you're going to be here because you said you would. And so we thank you that if two are gathered in your name, there you are. And Lord, in these times when we're having to reevaluate everything we do, you're going to show us a new thing. You're going to show yourself bigger than you've ever been in these times. And we just thank you for us to reach out to everybody that's watching uh, by Facebook or any other medium, that they'll just be blessed, that they'll encounter your presence in their home while we're speaking here. You're going to be there with them, ministering life for them. And we just give you the thanks for it and the praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Oh, 
Lord, receive our worship this morning. Keep your body and chest with each other so we, we can just be as one man, even in these times. We thank you, Lord God, that you have pronounced the end to this epidemic, this pandemic, or whatever they call it. We thank you, Lord God, we've got a name that's above every name. We don't care what number they give it or where it came from. I have a name that gives me power and authority over it. It may fall, a thousand fall by my son, ten thousand by my right hand, but I pronounce healing. I pronounce deliverance. I command that the spirit of fear leave the body of Christ. They leave this body of Christ and leaves me. So we're no longer afraid of what's coming because we know that you have this mapped out before the world ever began. You were the lamb slain from the foundation. So we know we trust you this morning. And as your disciples ask you, Lord, Teach us how to pray. Yes. Lord, teach us how to pray. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And everybody say amen. One, two, three. <laughs> Say it so many times. I got something in my ear in case you want to. 
In Matthew 6, 7, and 8, he says, when you pray, he didn't say if you pray. He, didn't, he did not leave us the option to not pray. He did not say if you feel led or if you feel so inclined to pray. In fact, he went on to say, Paul wrote, he said, pray without ceasing. Don't ever stop. Don't ever get out of a position of prayer. So that position of prayer must mean something more yes, than just right. showing up on Monday night and walking the track. Instead right. of showing up and just reciting a few words, there's got to be more of this than pinching some beans or going through a ritual. Right. Mm -hmm. and I'm not putting anybody down. Those things are great for remembering. But I'm saying that sometimes we put our faith in a ritual. Okay. That's right. I didn't that better. That's he said, when you pray, don't use faith repetitions. What's the definition of repetition? Something we do over and over again, correct? Yes. Don't do that, he said. The heathen do that. Okay. So they will they think they're gonna be heard for their many words. Okay. Y'all think sometimes like I said, if your prayer when you pray to God other than when you're praying in tongues, if it doesn't sound like you're talking to me, then what are you doing? Right. Who are you talking to? Like God needs these and thousands, thus is and thine. He doesn't do that up there because he doesn't do it here. That was our interpretation. And sometimes I, I find people that the country's cornbread, and suddenly they start, sometimes, uh, suddenly they start praying, they start sounding like, you know, Shakespeare. Like, what, what are you doing? You're, you're junior sample from the cornfield. Right. Nobody knows what that means. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father, watch this, knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Then why do we do it? If he already knows what I have need of, why am I spending this time asking for things that he has already said that he knows I need? Well, because there's a reason for it. Yeah, come on, Pastor. Next page. Next page. In 2 Chronicles 7, this is my revelation. He said, of course, if is the big word in this verse. If is like that. If we do this, fine. If we don't, we have a choice. We've always got free will to do. But he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, watch this, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. If there's ever been a time in history that we need our sin forgiven and our, our land healed, this is it. So this is a mandate, not for the world. Why do we expect the world to be any different than they are? They're doing exactly what they're programmed to do. It's the church's job. It's the people of God to do something. Today. We're waiting for the government to tell us it's okay. We need to get on our face and begin to pray. What does prayer mean? This is what I want to talk about. Next page. The word pray, every word it's used in, in this instance, in fact, all throughout the New Covenant, I can tie this together. The word pray literally means to judge. It means to form an opinion or a conclusion. That means when I go to God, I'm not asking Him what He wants. I've already figured out what He wants. I've already pronounced judgment on it. I know in whom I have believed. When I stand and pray, it's not wishy-washy, in and out, asking, wishing, hoping. It's that I know what I'm saying is the will of God. And I'm in agreement with what He has said. I'm interceding. I'm putting what God has said together with somebody on earth so that it can happen on this earth. Yeah, come on, Pastor. You That's what prayer is. Yeah. Next page. Amen. Paul well, says, praying is not about getting permission. If in your prayer you're asking for permission, you've come too late. You need to get in the Word and find out what He says so that when you pray, there is no doubt behind what you're saying. Lord, let me, next slide. I've got something for you. Jesus even chided the Pharisees one day. He said, you guys are completely wrong. You don't even know the Scriptures that you're teaching others. And you don't know anything about the power of God. And I wonder if he would come today if he wouldn't look at us and say, you guys don't even know what you're preaching. Right. Right. You just preach a bunch of crap. You don't have any idea what you're talking about. And yet the reason, in other words, why is it that he moved in the first church? I think we need to find out why he's not doing it here like he did there. I think that he hasn't changed his mind, hasn't changed his character. He's just looking for somebody here to be like they were so he can flow through us unrestricted. Okay. It's finished. This phrase, Lord, if it be thy will, is not in the Bible anywhere. Not anywhere. Jesus was in the garden and he knew the will of the Father. He didn't say, what's your will? He said, Lord, I, I know what you want from me. Is there any other way? 
He wasn't trying to find out what God wanted. He was simply, he, that was an agonizing place of surrender. But the, the fact that I hear so many people pray, Lord, if it be thy will. You know what? Find out if it's his will and shut your mouth until you know. Amen. Right. See, you're not doing anything but religiousizing a spiritual power that we could be using to create things in the earth. And now we've dumped it down, watered it down, unplugged it so it has no power. And now we just do it and chant and walk around and say words. And that is not what prayer is for. Next page. James chapter 1. Verse number 5 through 8 says, Let him what? Ask. In fact, he was saying, If any of you need wisdom, need wisdom ask and I'll give it. I won't uphold it from anybody. I won't, I won't hold back from anybody. The wisdom Solomon had, I'll give you that and more. Right. But if you're going to ask for something, if you're going to, actually, the word ask is the word pray. If you're going to pray, then pray in faith. Don't come here undecided and stand before me because you know what? Half of it's going one way, half of it's going the other. In fact, he went on to say, he said, if you're doubting, you're like a wave tossed of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. But let not that man suppose that he will what? Receive anything from the Lord for he is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Find out what you believe. Yes, that's right. And then stand on it. Make somebody knock you off of it. If you believe it and you're wrong, God can still fix that. But the fact that we've made no decision, we have no idea what we're talking about. We're just saying the good Lord and we're, we're quoting scriptures that aren't in the Bible. Okay. Like the Lord put more on you than you can handle is not in the Bible. Not even the idea of that is in the Bible. Well, we say that to blame the you know the coronavirus or the or hurricanes or, or tornadoes or whatever it is, and we think those are acts of God. They're just acts of nature. Those are things that are here because of the fall of man. Don't blame them on God. He said, in the midst of calamity, I can make you a secret yes. place, a safe place. Come on now. That's what I'm looking for yes, in this sir. church. Amen. Let me ask you a question. This is rhetorical, but not loaded. Do you believe in the coronavirus? I would say the reason we do is because it's demonstrating it's here because people are dying. Right. I don't see it. Right. Yet I believe it's here. Oh, and so much so that I'm wearing masks and washing my hands and staying home. I'm doing what they tell me because I believe the threat of that is real. Right. I can't see it. Yeah. I can't verify it. I don't have an electron microscope that I can see the virus. But you know what? Some people who wear white coats that evidently studied and went to school are telling me to be afraid of it. So I guess we might as well at least acknowledge that. But here's my point. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sin and gave you eternal life? You didn't see him do it. No. Right. right. So which one do you believe the hardest? Which one are you going to stand on the most? Are you going to stand on the, the devil's ability to kill you more than the God's ability to save you? Because they're both invisible. Yes. And you just got to make up your mind which of these you're going to stand on. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes, yes. amen. And that doesn't mean I'm, you know, it's like I'm not going to tip God like rub ham all over myself and go swim out where the great whites are. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, that's foolish. I'm not going to let anybody cough in my face just to prove a point. My point is, is that somewhere we're going to draw a line and go, you know what? I'm done with being afraid. I'm done with worrying about what the devil can do. I know that he holds us in the palm of his hand. Yes. So no matter what, if the worst thing that can happen to me is I die, then I'll just be with Jesus. Right. Next page. Right. That's right. Romans 10, 17. Everybody knows it, but let's talk about it in conjunction with what I just said. Do I get anything on this? So that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. How do I get to where when I'm praying, I'm praying in faith? Because I've heard the word so much that I'm fully persuaded. Yeah. I'm not half in, half out, 99%. Maybe it is, maybe it is. It's like when I go to lay my hands on the sick, I know that he has put healing in my hands. I know the word of God. I've settled it. And the problem with this is, is that this is a process that you have to repeat often. Because you can be fully convinced, fully persuaded, and then go a little dry spell and not be in touch with that anointing. And you'll be coming to a situation where it challenges you and suddenly that faith is not there. That's why he told the Israelites to go out and gather manna every day. Yeah. Yes. When they tried to gather enough for a few a few days, it began to rot and stink. And, and because God says, I don't need you. Go, you know, get enough for the next month and then coasting. I need to have an ongoing relationship with you yes. on a daily basis. Yes. So I can yes. deposit fresh manna, fresh anointing, fresh revelation. Next page. That's good. That's good. Right. Amen. 
Here we go. Our job is to not just phone it in. You know what that means? It means we're just doing it out of habit. Yeah. We're just doing it because I've heard somebody else do it. Yeah. We're praying this way, and, and I'm saying things and, and doing things that are not connected. Yeah. That they're not live. It's just a tape message I remember. And there's a difference. Our job is to phone it in and just offer words that we have heard others use. It's our job it's to, be, to believe him, agree with him, and take possession of that promise. That's what prayer is. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to agree with him. And then I'm going to take possession of him. This is no longer him saying it. It is me saying it. It's no longer what God wants. It's what I want. We are now in conjunction. We're now holding each other's hand in covenant. And we're. that's why he told them to pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm praying that. I'm demanding that. I'm calling things to be not as though they were in the place as if Jesus were standing here. That is what prayer is. That's right. Amen. It's not asking God, what, what should I do? What should we do? Whatever you want. You know what? I think it's offensive to God. Okay. I heard somebody say one time about the differences between men and women. Is that women need conversation. They crave it. They want you to talk to them. They want you to investigate them. They want you to inquire about what they're feeling, what they're thinking. To them, it's as strong as the, the sex drive is in, is in men. For you to come home and say to your, uh, to, to your wife, she said, ask you a question. And you go, well, what are you going to talk about? It's to say, I have no interest in you whatsoever. I just want you around to clean the dishes and do things that make me happy. But I have no interest in investing in you. God does not, I don't believe for a second, that he is happy when we blow him off for a week and then we show up on Sunday and go, hey! Right. right. Amen. I think it's offensive, I think, because we don't love him enough to walk with him. We just show up when we need something from him. Next okay. page. Charlie didn't get much sleep with that. Well, in James chapter 4, may I approach another argument to this? You know, as I got people in the church that tell me that, you know, it's wrong to ask for stuff that you need. There's an anti-prosperity movement going around, and I get why. Yeah. I understand that. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't want to give you things. I'm a father, and Christmas morning is my favorite time. My kids are in, almost all of them in their 30s. I still, we want to wrap gifts and watch them open them because I love to give them stuff. I love it. And if, he, if I'm evil in comparison to him, how much more did he give to his only begotten son? The very best he had. Yes, yes. He's a giver. Yes, he is. He loves to give. He wants you to receive. So why is it not working? I think the problem's on our end. It is. Okay. I think it's about what we're doing, not about what he's doing. Right. And so James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, says, Where do wars and fights come from? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and can, cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own pleasures. What does that verse mean? Well, you know what? For the first time in my professional career, I consulted a commentary. <laughs> Next page. I don't know who this guy is, but John Gill wrote this and it finally cleared it up for me. He said, the reason was because you asked amiss. You're not asking in faith of a divine promise. What we just said. You know what? You just ask for things, but you have not cleared up the fact that he's a giver. You know, I haven't cleared up in your own heart that I've already settled. He wants me to have this. So you're asking amiss. You're asking, you're like you're slinging it out there. You're not submitted to the will of God, nor are you, uh, uh, nor were the right end to do good to others, to make use of, of what might be bestowed for the honor of God and the interest of Christ, but that you may consume upon your lust, indulge to intemperance and luxury, as the man that had much goods laid up for many years and did to uh, to the neglecting of his soul. When you ask for a miss, is what I just spoke of earlier. We're not spending time with God. We're not walking with God. We don't have a relationship with Him. He's just Santa Claus. We just go and sit in His lap when we want something. And when we do that, we haven't settled what we want, that we've cleared it up, that we know the promise in His Word. Yes, that's right. Well, I know. So let's review. When I'm praying, I've already settled it in my heart that God has already said yes to this. Next page. What does that 
it say? For all, all the promise. They can't see it. <laughs> What's that? You said, what does it say? They can't see it. <laughs> it says, <laughs> all promises. Second Corinthians 1. All of them. All the promises. Yes. If I can find this in one thing. If you want to change your life, start digging through the Bible. And when he gives a promise to us, anybody, even if he gives a promise to Israel, that's fine. Because I'm grafted in. I'm grafted in. And I'm saved as the children of Abraham through my covenant with Jesus. Amen. That's right. So every promise that he has given me is already been given. Yes. Let me say this. Every promise that he has given us, he has already said yes to. Right. God, should I, should I have a, a, a better situation? Should I, should I uh, have a better living condition? Should I have a better car? Well, God is the one that told uh, Moses and when they went into the new land. He said, just don't forget me. When you move into bigger houses and have more, car, have more cattle and everything, you have increases. You know, in other words, this is a natural uh, a reaction to my presence, you'll begin to be fruitful and multiply. Just don't forget me. Why? Because when you forget him, you have plugged that relationship and now the devil can come and steal your goods and steal your stuff. All he's waiting for is an amen from us. Amen means count it done. Now, I'm hoping you'll get here or maybe one day soon. No, I've already said amen. When I say amen, I've received what you said as a finished deal and now I'm going to remind you of it until it gets here. Next page. There should be no debate or hesitation when it comes to what the Word of God has promised us. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Whatever belongs to Him belongs to me. Whatever belongs to Jesus belongs to me. He is seated. I am seated with Him in heavenly places. Where is He seated? At the right hand of the Father. With all power and authority, I am sitting right there in Him. Yes, that's right. With the same power and the same authority. Amen. I think what's happening is I'm not praying right. I think what I'm having, what I'm doing is I'm, I've am i got this thing set up, but it's not plugged in. And what I think I'm doing is saying words that I don't believe. And what the Bible calls those are empty words. Yes. And we have to give an account for those one day. Now, I'll just tell you, I think he takes this very seriously that when we approach his throne, we should say words filled with faith. Words that we truly believe. Asking, if I, what if I don't? What if I can't get there? Then get on your face and say, Lord, I believe him. I believe. Until you can get your faith rising up to the level where when I decree something and declare it, I already know I'm heaven. That's right. Next page. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, this is old school to some, but Hebrews 11, 1. So now faith is a substance. And I finally got it. Faith is a substance. It's not a, a, a wish. It's not a hope. It's not some concept. It is a substance that stuff is made of. In fact, that faith is the substance that all is the DNA of all created matter. The entire universe started as the substance. That's right. How did it become something? God spoke yes. to that yes. and it became something. Yes, it Let did. there be light. Out of faith came light. That there be a firmament. Out of faith came a firmament. Yeah. That this, this residue in the spirit, if you will, this thing that can collect on you because you have spent time in God's Word, faith begins to build up in you. It's almost like a dirty lint stream in a dryer. Yeah. The more time I spend with the washing of the water, the more time I spend in the, in the spirit realm with the wind blowing on me, a residue collects as I spend time in His Word. Now I've got stuff that when I pray, God can take what I pray to receive and build what I need down here. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can't see it because we're not spirit. We're not in the spirit. We're still in the flesh. I can't wait to see what heaven's going to look like. We're going to see all this stuff and go, oh, God, no wonder. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. What if there's a Holy Ghost dump truck ready to dump things out waiting for us to get the substance? And it can't do it because we haven't done our job. Next one. By faith, we understand that the world is framed by the Word of God. So that the things which are seen are not made of things which are visible. Things that are seen are not made of things that are visible. Things that you want to see 
will be manufactured and shaped in by something you can't see. The way to get things in the, in the now where you can see them is to operate in faith in the spirit and begin to draw them to you. And to me, faith, prayers like this, it's like one of those old timey clotheslines. It's got a wheel on each end. And as I'm pulling the rope, the stuff that I want on the other end is coming toward me. And I keep praying until I get it. I've already got it. It's already mine. But it's on the other end of the little rope. So I just got to keep praying until it manifests in my life. That's what prayer is. I believe it's there. I believe it's mine. I believe it hasn't shown up yet. But as I continue to agree with God's word, I'm just pulling it toward me. That's wrong. Until I see it. Next page. In Philippians 2 9, I, I referenced this earlier. He's given us a name. That's a very good name. We can use a name that has power and authority that should, by the way, carry character with it. Okay. I'm very hesitant when I see people trying to use the name and the authority, but there's no character manifested in their life. Because I think you cannot use it until you manifest the character. That's, right. That's just me. Amen. Next page. Almost done. Why do I know this is written? Even in the Old Covenant, when Daniel prayed, he set himself to pray, got on his knees. Three weeks later, three weeks later, 21 days he's praying. That you set your heart to understand. From the, from the moment you begin to decree in your own heart, I'm going to seek God for this. Even what I get from it is even before he uttered his mouth, God was preparing Gabriel to bring an answer to Daniel. Not even to lag behind a single day. Right. But Gabriel said, but man, when I started heading this way, the prince of Persia withstood me. I fought with this demon spirit for three weeks before I could get here. Right. But I want you to know one thing. I came because I heard your words. Okay. Right. Now watch this. I don't even see that God sent Gabriel. God, God gave the power to Gabriel. God gave the power to Daniel to summon Gabriel. Okay. Now, that's what my Bible says anyway. So don't you know that we're going to judge angels? That they're, they're ministers to the heirs of salvation. That's us. They serve us. And they notice I don't have to ask God for an angel. I have command over them. I can, do, I can decree and pronounce that, that they will come and serve God's purpose through me. Now, if, he's, if I'm trying to get them to serve my purpose, then they're not coming because I'm asking a miss. But if I've already found out the will of God for my life, and I'm going to say, Scott, what do we do with questions that we don't know the answer to? Well, I feel like the Bible tells me to get my answer from the word, then pray. That's right. Not go and pray, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? Because that's too easily infiltrated by the enemy to shoot a dart in there and mislead you. Go find a promise, stand on that, and then he'll, he'll elaborate. You see how much safer that is. Don't get me wrong. Yes. Next question. I think that's it. That's a good word. Let's stand up and pray together. Okay. 60 apart, of course. <laughs> this has got to be over soon. I believe we're at a critical mass for we? we got to do something. Here. What, what did I talk about there? What's this all about? I feel like the church needs to get a hold of what the Lord God is. And be convinced of it, fully persuaded. And then go before him and build a wall and intercede and pray until something changes. Don't go to him. Don't, don't, there are places when you're confused. There's a place to go in your secret, in your closet, prayer closet. But what I'm talking about is that you need to go to the Word first so that you can, my, in my mind is transformed by the Word of God. My thoughts will then begin to be the thoughts of the Lord, not my own random jam, jumbled up mess. So I spend time in His Word. He's aligning me to hear from Him. He's aligning me to think like Him. And so, is this a guilt trip? No, let's just start. Okay? Let's just start reading the Word. I want you to start in the covenant and just start reading. If you get something you don't understand, just spend a little more time in it. Look for him to reveal something to you. Let's pray. Father, we pray for this country. I praise you, Lord God, right now, first of all, that this world is in dire need of rescue. 
Whatever's going on, I know you didn't send the virus, but I know that you can use this opportunity where Satan stupidly afflicted us to come in and bless us. I thank you, Lord God, this morning for all the other pastors and churches and ministers. And Lord God, you're going to uh, let their their uh, oil and their their uh, meal not run out during this famine, during this time of pestilence and and uh, pandemic or whatever they call it. The Lord God, they're going to, the birds are going to feed them if they need to be. And we're not going to live in panic. We're not going to live in fear. But I pray, Lord God, that we stem the tide and turn the day and make something new happen. The Lord God, we begin to know what your will is and begin to decree it and begin to declare it so that we know in whom we have believe. And we're going to keep doing it until something changes. We're not going to be so easily moving. We see washing up today and down tomorrow. We're not going to be double-minded. We're going, not going to be unstable in all our ways. We're going to settle it. Stand on it. Stand on if somebody asks questions or trying to tear us down, we'll either, we'll either cut that relationship out of our life or we'll just simply say, it is well. Yes. We well. thank, you, thank you, Lord. We praise you. Before I let you go, if there's anybody out there right now that you, I just don't, I feel uh, uh, leading to do this on him. I feel like there are people watching me. You never, ever surrender. You never really give your life to the Lord. You've been around it. You've heard it. You've been skating it. Some of you watch by this and you think this is enough. It's not. What you need to do is get on your knees right now and pray with me right now and ask Jesus to come into your heart to save you. Ask the Holy Spirit to wash you and cleanse you so that now instead of you trying to do better over and over, you're just going to become better. You're going to be made again in His image. So I'm praying for those right now in Jesus' name. That are, that are on their knees asking Jesus to come into their life. That right now they just say these words for the Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you were raised from the dead. And I confess you as the Lord and Master of my life. And from this day forward I'll never leave you. And you'll never leave me. In the name uh, that is above every other name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are people here right now before we go. You've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Man, we just got to get it done. We need the power to flow. We, we don't know the scriptures and we don't know the power of God. We need to know the scriptures and we need to know the power of God. So Father, I pray for the church of the living God to stand up on their feet. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, receive this as done. Don't look for something to know you've got it. Believe that the word of God is true and that Jesus said, how much more will I give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So Lord, we pray right now, Jesus, baptize us. Fill us again with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we receive you gladly. We step apart, set ourselves apart from everybody else. We are answering a call to ministry today. We're answering a call in the name of Jesus to be set apart, to be your hands and feet in the earth. So that right now, Lord God, as we see the last days approaching, you're going to get your church ready, your bride ready to take us home. We thank you for this. We praise you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Jesus. everybody say amen. amen. Listen, if you pray any of those prayers, let me know. Send me a message. Uh, put something on here and we'll agree with it with you in Jesus' name. See you next week.